Hey y'all, you know it's hot when the big hat's out. Well, good afternoon. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike and I do bees. Welcome back to Southeast Louisiana here in my bee yard. Hi, I've got a few things to do today and I want to always remind everybody that I'm not doing a how-to video, especially today. This is not a how-to video. This is definitely a how-I do video. It's midday on uh, July 24th. It is definitely a hot one. We're in a heat advisory. It's somewhere between 95 and 100 right now because it was 95 just a little while ago. Been working in the yard all day, uh, getting my yard back in order, and uh, I got the big hat out. When I got the big hat out, hat out it's hot. Yesterday was a day that I really got exhausted in the heat and humidity. But I'm clear now, I'm good. I've been working all day in the heat. Um, just got to stay smart and get in the shade and uh, cool off, stay hydrated, obviously. So that's what I've been doing, but it is time. I got to go get these dead outs off. I've been telling you about these dead outs for two weeks now. And I haven't got them. There's two of them out there, and then you saw the video where the hive fell over. I've got that one to clean up. So I've got honey, uh, I've got brood comb to store that's salvageable. I've got some to pull out of my freezer and store outside the freezer, and I want to show everybody how to do that. And I have got to get all my supers put out so the bees can begin to clean them. Uh, so you can see how I store my honeycomb as well. This is how I do it. I'm not telling you this is right, I'm not telling you this is wrong. I'm just showing you how I do it. And you know that's how I do. I just show you all my ways and what's worked for me. I've come up with these ways that I do it now because it's worked for me. I have not tried BT, but I'm not a believer in the BT um, because BT kills chewing insects. Insects have to begin chewing for it to work. I don't need the wax caterpillars that are going to turn into new moths hatching out of their eggs and eating my comb and then dying because I don't know how long it takes them to eat it and then kill them. So, so I have not used BT and don't really plan on trying it. I've found a way that works for me and I like it. So that's what I'm doing today. All right, so we got to go out uh, and get those dead outs. So here's my freezer. This is this is a bunch of wax I scraped off of old frames. Now I always tell y'all about saving wax. I say wax. This is wax. Oh, the bag is ripped. This is wax. I say this bag, that bag down there are is burcomb. That's why I save my burcomb. That's a lot of wax. I need a new bag for it and I keep all my frames in here so we're gonna get all this straightened out I'm gonna show you how I store my stuff all right But yeah, wax moths are in here already. But notice they're in the brood box and they're not in the honey box, the honey super. So that should tell you exactly how I store my stuff because they don't like clear comb. They like the protein and all that pollen and everything. You know, wax moths gotta live too. I only need 30 frames out of my freezer. Let's get this thing on the trailer. That's clear. We'll just do a quick quality check on it and it'll get stored. It's clear. Small hive beetle larvae. I'm going to transport them and burn them. Don't want them in the ground. Although I'm going to drench. I don't want them in the ground reproducing. Everybody else is alive, and uh, everybody else is doing good. That's good. Look at them all. This is how you fix them. Don't want them things reproducing. Set this wax on fire. 
It'll definitely get them, but you don't want to reproduce them now. The frames will go in the freezer. And it'll kill them. All right, so looking at this board, as I burn this stuff up, it, it's just satisfying. Um, let me stir them up and get some live ones out of there. If they're live, they're hot. So I look at this board and I look at this solid bottom. And I say, okay, look how tr you know everything went to the bottom. Uh, a screen board, these larvae are going through it. Now I run screen boards. Majority of my stuff is screen boards. I'm going back to these though. I ran screen boards not for ventilation down here. Okay, I, bees are fine with these. You can vent your hives. You don't have to have screens to vent them. I'm not running them for that. I ran them as just something to help if I had hygienic bees and mite drop. You got hygienic bees, the mites drop through the screen, they die, they don't get back on your bees. Problem is, these things drop through and they multiply. Both are bad, mites are worse, of course, but the benefit of, of, of the screen for the mites is next to nothing from what I can tell because I'm still gonna treat them and really, I don't, I don't need to count on that as being necessarily a type of a treatment. And I don't count on it as a treatment, but I, but I thought it maybe it would help. But either way, I'm going to treat them. So I'm going back to these because I can treat the mites, but if the hive is weak, I can't stop the population of these because I use ground drench. I went back to ground drench this year in front of my hives. It's worked great the the beetles are down plus we had a cold winter i'm sure that helped too but the beetles are down i can't get the drench under the hives where the screen boards are so that's an issue and i need these things to die in the dirt when they go to pupate so i drench in front of the hives with permethrin and that gets these beetles these beetle larvae so if i'm not if i'm using screen bottoms I'm not able to get to them. They're falling out of the bottom, going in the dirt, and they're reproducing. They're becoming beetles, and we can't have that. That's not acceptable. Now, I'm baking this on here, but that's all right. It'll scrub off, and I'll bleach it. So, that's why I'm, I'm really, I'm not getting rid of my screens. I'm going to use them. They're great boards. I'm going to keep using them, but I left the slides in this year. I did not take the plastic slides out of the boards because... I didn't want the beetles falling through. So all my screen bottoms, I think one or two don't because I was in a hurry and I quick like um, do a hive together for a swarm or something. All the ones that came out of winter, I did not take the slides out. I'm gonna leave them in. I want those beetles to have to get on those slides and go out the front. And when they go out the front and go to pupate in that dirt, I want them to die a slow and painful death. It's just that simple. Beetles, they don't kill a hive but they will grab hold of a weak one. All right, so we got wax moss. Uh, pretty much got this whole box. Let's pop the other one. This box is toast anyway. Yeah, they're in the bottom one too. So this one might've been dead a little bit longer. When a, when a frame looks like it's moving, it's usually larvae. Look at those small high beetle larvae. Now this is not a frame I'm going to save. I'm not going to salvage. To, to me, it's just got too much wax moth. Plus it's full of pollen. That pollen won't be no good. There goes some larvae. I don't want them falling. But I'm going to put it in the freezer now. But uh, I won't save this. I'm going to freeze them just to kill them. And so I know what everybody says. I see the forums. But the first thing everybody says is, Yeah, freeze it, reuse it. The, wax, the bees will fix it. I think when that was written years ago, it was written in reference to wax foundation. They will fix the plastic cell. But I'm telling you what I've seen in my house. Maybe it's be mine. Y'all tell me. When I got a big old patch of wax moth damage. I'm getting the shade here. No sense of standing in the sun if I'm talking to y'all. And I got that big old patch of wax moth damage. Yeah, they will fix it. If there's a good flow on, they'll fix it. And you'll look on there and there'll be all dark comb. There'll be one patch of white. And then it'll be all all the rest but what I have noticed is if you put it in the beginning of spring and you're not feeding they'll tear that out and they'll tear it down to the plastic cell 
and you'll have this frame with all these big giant oh, splotches in there and then when they start getting any amount of nectar in they tend to make crazy comb on it or it's not always uniform so once it gets wax moth damage personally i don't i don't feed heavily in the spring because i don't need to there's so much nectar coming in i don't need to i can't keep up with swarms as it is much less feeding them uh, so they they don't fix it that well so when i see a frame like that it's it, it you can see the huge trails and areas of wax moth damage and all and if i pull that webbing out it'll it'll just pull a bunch of old wax will fall off Psh, it's out i'll scrape it i'll get better use out of that as a rewax foundation than i will as a they'll repair it foundation from the freezer i put it in the freezer what is that put it in the freezer to kill those darn small hot beetle larvae i hate small hot beetle larvae i hate ants too though i mean i think i hate ants and wax moth larvae more than i hate mosquitoes and mosquitoes are detestable little insect yeah all right let me finish this up i'm calling frames i'm gonna show you what i come up with and what i'm gonna do and how i'm gonna do it okay let me uh let me show you i'm gonna stand the camera up, show you what i'll here here's what i'll save and what i won't save and i'm gonna show you all right here's a wired wax foundation this one they will repair it pretty easily a carpenter amp we caught this it, it, this is a prime example of why you go in your dead out as soon as you find it i probably would have saved it they haven't even started boring into the wood except for that we'll squish that because they're alive and those little trails now on this wired wax they'll repair that because it's through and through i mean it's regular wax they seem to repair that better in my in my experience now i'm telling you what i've seen so i'll save that one it'll go in the save pile and these are some of the saves uh they're just they got some wax moth trails but like i said when there's big giant wax moth spots they won't they they, they won't repair them off the bat so this is superficial they're not in it yet but see they're right through there they they'll probably take that down to the foundation be a big old spot right there they won't repair it but it's got good start on that side so like these are the ones i'll save um this one it's iffy see where i pulled that that webbing out of there and there's a hole where they've eaten all that out they'll take this and start pulling the wax down but there's enough it's such a small spot i'll probably go ahead and freeze it and save it that you can see the trails through there they don't seem to repair those really well so most of them are like that uh this one's got some mildew on it this is a wax that was honey frame got a little bit of damage here's what's going to happen i'm not going to save this one after all they're going to pick all this part that roach they're going to pick all that apart and it's going to be a big old bare spot now in the flow will they fill it yeah but I, I need them filling it before the flow to build workforce i don't need wasted space so for me in my opinion i'd rather scrape this re-wax it and let them draw it out uh, on a fresh sheet they just when they take that down and that's a big old because they'll take every bit of that down because it's all of it's got spaces and blotches in it and they won't they won't do anything with it so that'll go here just like this one same with that one they're not going to do anything with that it's just my experience what i've seen maybe your bees are different i don't know now again in a big flow or if you're pouring the one-to-one -to, -one to them i'm guessing they'll fix it up pretty well but on, in my experience just on the nectar on a on a moderate nectar flow that they're getting early spring when it's just enough to feed them they don't do anything with it so i'd rather have wax foundation at the ready ready to go i got enough drawn in that freezer so those will go in the no good pile uh, these are melting it's so hot out here <laughs> the wax is melting i gotta get it out of here cool it off goodness it is hot people well, this is too far gone it's all eaten up and yeah i know forms will tell you what to do with it freeze it the bees will fix it that's what they all say everybody says that it's because that's what the book tells you and, and i agree with that they'll fix it to an extent but look look at them wax moths in there them cat little caterpillar larvae wormies get down in there squish so yeah that's too far gone in my opinion so all these are shot these are freeze and those are shot so one two three 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I gotta make space for 13. And I'll show you what I do with the other brood comb. Let's look at the honeycombs. They all are just simply robbed out. Nothing, nothing wrong with these. What I would do is I will freeze these. Just to be sure we don't have any critters that laid eggs in them. Now the wax moss won't mess with this. Again, that's going to tell you a little bit about how I store mine. Plus ants are in there. I hate ants. I, do, I just hate ants. I, I really do. This one looks even better. Anyway, we'll freeze them. Just to be on the safe side. And uh, there's an old wax moss. Let me, let me kill that thing. It's a big one. Look at him. You ready? All right, if you don't want to see anything gory, close your eyes. This is not the time. I'm not responsible now. This is not the time to look. Not suitable for all viewers. And then wax on. I don't like them. Now, what we have to do is we got frames in the freezer. What do I do with those frames? Because now they got to come out. Now they're going to be susceptible to wax moths. No. I'll show you. So, what do I do with my frames? I'll show you. I need a good box, one that's semi-sealed up, and I'm going to go ahead and use these nukes because I've got them already, I've already got them brewing, but here's what I'm going to do. So I'll get me a box, and I get these frames directly out of the freezer, and I just took these out. Empty frames out of the freezer. Well, this one got damaged, it looks like, in the freezer, but so I'll, I'll go right to a box. This is my drawn cone. That one, they're not going to mess with. I'll leave that one out. That, I put that in there probably just to make sure there was everything killed on it. But there's no brood in it. This one has a little wax moth damage. We'll see what they do with it. And it's got pollen. Oh, this one's no good. It's broken. So we can call this out. It's got a broken frame. I'm not worried about it. And... the best frame. I don't know why I saved it, but I did. So, I load them right out of the freezer. Nothing has a chance to get in them, right? Let's move them over here. So this is what I do over here. So I got this nuke. There's a stack of two. I got a shim on it. And you can't smell it, but I smell wax crystals or wax moth stuff. Moth crystals. So I got two in the stack nukes. Both of them are full of five, so there's gonna be 10 frames in here. And I got a bottom board on it, but I got it flipped upside down. I don't want no openings. I mean, there's little openings, but wax moths can get in little ones. But I'd still, I don't want big openings. I need one more frame. Let me get one more frame. So basically, I cycle my stuff through the freezer, then I go into a box, okay? A little tight, but it'll go. All right, and let's get this box on top of frozen frame here. All right, and then I put a shim in it. I don't want any of this fume to get out. So you want to keep the fumes in. And what I use is these cakes, moth cake. You can use those or moth crystals. The key to this, well, I just dropped it, but the key to this is getting the right stuff. The active ingredient on this is p dash diachlorobenzene you don't want that ethylene one or whatever that other one that starts with the e i think you want this one it's para diachlorobenzene or p dash chlorobenzene they come in moth cake and you'll see them in moth crystals check the active ingredient that's the one that's used with bees in their frames and these cakes come in these little hangers or the crystals. The crystals you can lay on a little piece of paper and lay in here. They'll dissolve over time, but you don't have to replace them as soon as they dissolve. This one, this old cake has been in here for months. And it's been dissolved, but as soon as I open it, I can smell it. So let's look at what happened. Now, I will warn you. The frames are going to be moldy. Let me get my hive tool. So when they sit, at least in our area, when they sit in this humidity, um, they're going to mildew you're gonna get that now it looks awful I know but if you watch my videos last year I had some of these and what that is that's the pollen I put this in matter of fact I put it in the tax form that we're gonna check on the video and 
this was that nasty frame that had that old mildew pollen so what did they do with it well let's see what she did with it appears to me she cleaned it up they cleaned it up pretty well and gave her a nice spot to put some brood completely cleaned out that old pollen they'll clean all that fuzzy mold off they will clean the pollen out of those holes and they will use that that frame that frame is still good i know it looks bad and shame on me i guess if somebody thinks so but it works all it has to do is be on top it doesn't have to be in the bottom it sinks and it fills this up so i'll just take this thing pull my plastic off and then she goes and you can buy these refills i get this at walmart or amazon wherever stick it in that thing i just lay it in here i lay it in the plastic i put it in there i put the lid on and you look that that frame you saw that mildew thing's been in there for months no wax moth damage none at all bottom same way no wax moth damage in there so that keeps the moths out the moths come in lay the eggs the eggs hatch become those worms those larvae those larvae go in and eat through your comb and destroy it make their cocoons spin their webs and destroy your wax uh they don't mean no harm by it they don't mean no harm they don't they just a wax worm they just they like a squirrel trying to get a nut they, they just try and do their thing but we don't want them in our house but they don't mean no harm they just doing what they do but we got to keep them out so that's how we keep them out of there that works it's I've, i did i started it three years ago and i did experiment with cedar chips somebody said you could do the same thing with cedar chips wax moths ate it up ate it up no way didn't work not even close um so basically i put everything through the freezer i leave it there at least a week at least a week come december i'll open them up no wax moth uh threat at that point as long as it's a cold winter We'll be good to go. Did talk to a lady. She only uh, vents them for about a week. Uh, I've actually pulled one out one time and vented it for eight hours and put it in a colony. The colony's doing fantastic. Uh, but I, I'd rather wait about a month if I can. So in the wintertime, I'll break them out, let them air out on the sides like those. Okay. And they'll, uh, they'll be ready to use. Again, that mildew or that mold or whatever it's growing, they'll clean that out. But... I'd rather have that than the entire comb damage. Now I got drawn comb. Good for swarm traps, good for building colonies. Works good. There you go. That's how I do it. Freezer, box, wax crystal, store, vent in the winter, go into spring. Now once you go into spring, you gotta use them. If you don't use them, you better get them back in the freezer or get them back under some crystals because you're gonna run into problems down here in our area. Uh, we'll get them again, but that's how I do it. So the only other thing I show you is how I do supers, and I'll do that when I bring all my supers out and we begin to let the bees clean them. But I'm not going to introduce those until about four hours before sunset, so that I don't have any craziness or some feeding frenzies going on. Don't want no robin to begin somewhere. At least if we do it before evening, and when they finally get done and decide to go rob, it's dark. Sound sound right? That's what I'm doing. This is the stuff in beekeeping. It's no fun, but it's all part of it. This is the other stuff here, moth ice crystals, and this same thing, active ingredient, P-diachlorobenzene, para-diachlorobenzene, that's why you hear it called para-moth, but as far as the deeps, they'll stay there, and then as I uh, find any more dead outs maybe, or abscons or anything like that, I'll take those frames, I'll pull the same out of the freezer, put those in, store them in the moth crystals. And that's what I'll do, and I'll stack on up. And last year I had 40 frames. I had 40. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Four deeps. Maybe five deeps. It was, I don't know, it was about chest high uh, to head high. And I had um, deep, uh, deep frames stored in there. It worked great. Bees cleaned them all up. I used them, plus what was in the freezer. So that's the way I do my frames. Again, it's not how-to, it's how I do. All right, now we gotta store some honey supers. That's the other question I get. How do you store your honey supers? Well, I'll show you in just a minute.
All right, there we go. I was hauling the supers over from the honey house. I got 10 more in there that got to be finished up, but once we're done with those, everybody will be out here. You've seen this stack before. You know what I do. You know you do. You know you do. You've seen it. But that's all right. We'll show you again. That's how I stack them up. Sometimes I stack them like that. This year, I think I'm going to stack them like this. I put them under a lean-to. Uh, keep the rain off of them. Yet let the air go through them and let the sunlight come through them. So... Let me stack them up, and then that's it. That's how I store them. Now, I gotta let daylight go through them. There are some that had brood in them, yes. Will that? Will they wax moss get them? In some cases, they do. But for the most part, I'd say 80 to 90 percent. Well, the moss don't touch them. They uh, they don't touch them. They they go right back out the next year. I'll call them and make sure there's nothing broken or no really bad mildewed stuff or anything. But uh, yeah, the moss may get a couple of them, you know, that may have some brood in them, but for the most part, I don't have a problem like this. I don't want to put moss crystals in these. I don't, I don't put them in here. You can, but I don't. Um, so these stay out. Those get stored the way we've seen them. So that's all there is to it, folks. That's how I store my stuff. Supers are done. Five of them out there now. Once we're done, uh, once we're getting ready to treat and all that, we'll rip those off and all the supers will be under here. And... We'll see who makes it on through into winter, and uh, we'll work on these next year. All right, let me stack them up because I'm tired. It is hot today. It's finally cooled off. I think it's down to low 90s, get ready to go into 80s in the shade. So, whew, go ahead and give me a shower and relax. I've right, been about 15 minutes, and everybody has found the buffet. All right, they're gonna eat good the next couple days, and I'm happy to let them eat good. They deserve it. They have worked really hard this season, and uh, they did really well. Uh, they really did. Well, folks, that's gonna be a wrap for this video. Remember, not a how-to, just how I do. That's all it was. Just showing you my way. Works for me. I like it. And I uh, don't have any problems. Bees are starting to pick up. That's why I did this at the end. I just, it gets annoying working out here when there is everywhere. They start going in every nook and cranny. But uh, we got it all settled out. We've got the colonies closed up. Who needs to be closed up? Everybody's settled. We're settled. It's nice to walk by and ride by these colonies and see bees all over the front of them. Uh, you know, and seeing larger populations on the front than I saw earlier on. So that means they requeened or they're doing fine. And uh, whoever isn't, well, we'll find out in the next two months. Um, other than that, everything's good to go. We are good to go. Gonna go try and check on some swarms that I promised I would do a video on. Just haven't gotten to it yet. And uh, I did a lot today just so I could have my day off tomorrow and just kind of enjoy myself and relax. So I'm all done for the day. Supers are stacked. I'll probably tie those down if we have any kind of a storm. Guys, I appreciate everybody watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a little boring, a little tedious. It's, it's part of beekeeping though. This is all part of it. It doesn't just involve the fun stuff. It involves the cleaning up, the dead outs, the culling wax, the making sure you wax moth proof it and small hive beetles and it all goes along with it. Somebody told me, uh, was it yesterday or something? I forget who it was. They said, oh yeah, we had some, some hives, but they died and we just gave up. Those things are work, aren't they? <laughs> you think? Yeah, they are, so. Guys, I appreciate you watching. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you don't mind, of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And don't forget to share this video with friends, family, anybody that just enjoys watching bees. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Y'all have a wonderful evening. May Lord God bless you. We'll see y'all later.